What's going on guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. Today we're going to do part two of the JP23 amp from down for sound. That's right. Do some extended test just for you guys as you requested. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Are you down for all dyno test? Now you guys may remember in previous video I kind of compared the JP23 to the SCAR RP2000.1D. I was quickly told by some other people there's a couple more amps that are closer, the Sound Cubed and the Wolfram models here as shown, and I'll show you some similarities and some differences. Similarities are the four transformers on each and the two output inductors. As far as the differences, the Sound Cubed and the Down for Sound have four rail capacitors where the Wolfram has six. So there's no real direct comparison to this amp, just these are closer than the SCAR. Now, according to the box, says the amp is designed in the USA in the heart of Florida and Nevada. And people were concerned about that because they also noticed made in China. Well, that happens all the time, friends. Rockford Fosgate, Kicker, a lot of companies do this. Now, there are some other things people pointed out, like the misspellings here. Annoy the JP23. I think they meant enjoy the JP23. And also, warranty does not cover abuse, neglected voltage, thief, or any other instances of user error. Again, it was just an overlook, I'm sure, but I think they meant theft, not thief spelled wrong. <laughs> you big dummy. Now, before I get started with the extended test, there are some things I want to talk about. The dyno test versus real world. Dyno tests are going to show the best possible output of the amplifier because of the conditions. Also, the amp dyno uses resistive loads versus reactive, which are speakers. Resistive loads do not change ohm load based on frequency, temperature, etc., See my video in the description for the Smart 3 where I tested a sub at half an ohm. You'll see the actual impedance. It also goes without saying half an ohm resistive load on amplifier is brutal and only a few I've ever tested will survive that. Bump your bass responsibly. Don't be bumping your bass loud late in the evening. Now let's get this party started. All right, just because we can, we're going to do the 8 ohm test first for the SQ heads. Most people really don't care about 8 ohm tests. Let's see what it does. 8 ohms. Here we go. We don't have any ratings, but we'll find out. 428 watts at 14.5 volts, certified up to 1% THD. We'll reset the dyno, try it uncertified. We always expect just a little bit more power uncertified than we do certified because it goes up to clipping here. And 436, 14.48. And finally, for the 8 ohm track, we will do the dynamic test 40 hertz pulse track. Looks like we get 439 at 14.5 volts. Now, as far as efficiency goes at 8 ohms, we would expect high 80s or low 90s. We got 80.3, so that's not fantastic at 8 ohms, to be honest with you. Now, 4 ohm test, you guys have already seen this in the previous video, but I'm going to talk about it again and use a different voiceover so you can see it. Rated 700 watts at 14.4, we easily got that. 816, 14.44, so nicely above the rated power. The uncertified test is next, up to the point of clipping. Eight hundred and forty watts at fourteen point three eight volts. Then we will try dynamic. All right, looks like it topped out at 843, 14.42. Efficiency at 4 ohms was basically identical to 8 ohms, 80%. All right, next up, 2 ohms, rated 1,300 watts at 14.4. 40 hertz test track, certified test takes us up to 1%. Total harmonic distortion, and we easily get that rated power plus more, 1490 at 14.46 now we'll try the uncertified test and we get one watt psych <laughs> let's run the test and see what we get all 
All right, 1557, 14.34. Cool. What about dynamically at two ohms? Keeps going. 1583 looks like the top there, 14.52. So good numbers. Now let's check the efficiency. And we measured 77% efficient. Now let's do the one ohm test. This is where the amp is rated 2300 watts at 14.4. Again, you guys have already seen this in a previous video, most likely. So this is nothing new. The amp does that power plus a little more, 2449 at 14.52. So good power here. Again, we will reset the dyno at lightning speed here so we can try the uncertified test up to the clipping point. And notice we got the voltmeter. And I'm going to talk about that here in just a minute because there was some concern about the voltmeter showing a different voltage than the dyno. 2626 at 1 ohm, 14.25. The reason it is is because the dyno stays on whatever number it gets at whatever voltage. The voltmeter you're seeing is actually showing real time voltage so it's really only like a little bit more than a tenth of a volt off if you look at it when it's resting but if you're trying to compare it at any time you'll notice that the voltmeter at the top is a little bit higher and that's not a problem with the voltmeter actually so just wanted to clarify that make sure you guys were aware of that 71 percent efficient at one ohm which is about standard for a class d now, low ohm test this is what you guys were waiting for. 0. 0.8 down to 0. 0.5. First up, 0. 0.8. Your sister says, you crazy. Let's try it out. 0. 0.8 certified. Now, notice it is not counting up cleanly in the certified mode at 0. 0.8. So, I don't call this a legit test if it doesn't count up cleanly. That means it is more than 1% distortion during the test run. So this 2344, in my opinion, is not truly a valid certified number. However, this is a base amp, and in most cases, we're looking for things up to clipping. So let's try the uncertified test here at 0.8. It does count up cleanly, and it puts some serious power, over 3,000 watts, 3,021 at 14.2. So that's good numbers here. And then we'll try the dynamic test next and see what it can do dynamically, checking out the power supply to see how much dynamic power it can put out uh, with short burst. And you can see good numbers here, over 3,300 watts. Of course, our voltage is kind of high, 14.7. But if you're going to be running a base head amp, you need to have base head electrical, my friends. <laughs> Efficiency, I expect it to be pretty low at 0.8, 62% which is, you know, not great, but it's to be expected. 0.67, how low can we go? Again, notice that it's not counting up cleanly. We didn't expect it to since it didn't do it at the 0.8 mode. So the 2514 number we get here, uh, again, I would not consider this a legitimate certified test on this amp. So let's try it uncertified up to clipping. We're base heads, we wanna hear, you know, bass, and we're looking at stuff up to clipping. 3,332 watts, 0.67, 14.13. It just keeps going up, my friends. Now let's reset the dyno using that as ninja skills that I have. Try the dynamic burst at 0.7. And you can see here, over 3,800, oop, 3,900 watts, 14.61, 3,927. 14.61. Now, what about that efficiency if you're running it super low? 62%. So, yeah, that's about what a class AB amp does at its highest impedance. Now, before we get to the 0.5 ohm, make sure you smack me a thumbs up and go check the video description and purchase some Wilson Audio merch. Now, on to the half an ohm. Your mama says, no, don't do it, you big dummy. We're going to do it anyway. Here we go. Certified run, half an ohm. And once again, does not count up cleanly. Check out the current pull, 443.7. Is you serious? <laughs> Good Lord. That pulled a lot of current. 
2866. Again, not what I would consider a true certified test because it did not count up that number cleanly. Now, uncertified, this is like the most brutal test ever on an amplifier. And this amp survived 3,824 watts at half an ohm, 14.1 volts. I was shocked, honestly, blown away that the amp was able to do this. Now let's switch to the dynamic mode. I know a lot of people don't like this, but we're gonna show it anyway. Let's let Big D talk about it during the test. Ah, oh, went into protect. Now it's not here. It's not on the meter that it's in protect. However, I'm gonna show you this while the camera's still rolling. Okay, so you see the meter, no protect light. There is the protect light on the amp. So while we're still rolling, I'm gonna cycle the amp off and on. And we're gonna try the track again. All right, so let's turn the amp off. Back on. Reset the dyno. And reset clamp. Let's try, let's try the test again. Dynamic pulse at half an ohm. Nope, now the protect light's on. Okay, so now this time, looks like 3,976 watts. Protect light is on, sorry for all that blue. And then we can verify it's also on the amp. Again, we got dual inputs going in here to give us all the current that we need. I would recommend, here's protect. Now the amp is fine, because we'll recycle it. Here, I'll turn it off. Turn it back on. We have blue light here and everything looks good here. So the amp is not broken. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do, but the half an ohm pulse track, it was gonna do over 4,000 watts. I think it's just gonna to pull too much current, just went into protect, but that's what it's supposed to do. Now on to the final results, rated power plus some. I'll show the dyno sheet here. You're welcome to pause it if you'd like to see the results individually. Note the asterisk means it did not count cleanly, so we don't really count that. The double asterisk means it went into protect. So it was very interesting that there was a posting in the listing of the amp that said certified 3,904 watts. So I'm not really sure about that one. I'd love to see another dyno run. My friend Jason over at Jason Subwoofer Solutions is getting ready to get one of these amps in. He's gonna run a test and we'll find out what he gets certified at half of them, just a comparison to the other result that was shown. Big shout out to my Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash old school stereo. Special thanks goes to Stuart, Travis, Jesus, Tomcat, T-Clock, John, Byron, Robert, Aaron, Big D, I'm out of here. JP23 down for sound, half ohm, dynamic burst, 40 hertz. Forty-eight oh nine, fourteen point five two. 